Hey guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the official 7-inch touchscreen for the Raspberry Pi. Now this is the official touchscreen, it's just got a rebranded Element 14 box in it, and these recently went on sale on Amazon for around $55, so I figured I'd go ahead and pick one up. This has been out on the market for a while, and I've had several viewers ask me to take a look at this thing, mainly for the older Raspberry Pis like the 2, 3, and 3B+, but in this video we're going to be adding a Raspberry Pi 4 to this unit. You can use a 1GB model, 2GB or a 4GB model Pi 4 with this screen. So this screen does not connect to the Raspberry Pi over HDMI. You will be using the DSi connector on the Pi and recently another company released a case specifically designed for this 7 inch touchscreen and the Pi 4. So I figured I'd go ahead and pair the three together and see how it all works out. As you can see, this case is specifically designed for the Raspberry Pi 4. We have the cutouts for our micro HDMI and USB type C. It does have a detachable back so you can easily access the Raspberry Pi. Unfortunately, when this is all put together, you cannot access the micro SD card. But the case is designed to sit nicely on the desk. The resolution on this is 800 by 480 and it does support up to 10 points of touch at the same time. Overall dimensions are 194 millimeters by 110 millimeters by 20 millimeters thick and that does include the standoffs on the back of the screen. The bezels are pretty thick so the viewable screen area is only 155 millimeters by 86 so it is a 7 inch screen but we do get some pretty big bezels here. The first thing I notice right off the bat is this screen does have some heft to it. It weighs quite a bit for just being a 7 inch screen for a Raspberry Pi but I think that's because we have all this metal on the back. As you can see we do have this PCB attached. This is going to control the LCD and the touch functionality. It does have a micro USB input if you want to power the screen separately from the Pi and we also get an extra USB port here and I believe that's just power out. It also comes with some mounting screws, a safety guide, our DSi ribbon cable, and a few female GPIO jumper wires. Assembling the screen with your Raspberry Pi is very straightforward. Display is carried over the DSi connector, so there is no HDMI on this. We'll have to grab that one ribbon cable that's included with the screen and plug it into the DSi connector on the screen's PCB. And when it's time to mount the Raspberry Pi up, you're just going to plug this right into the DSi connector on the Pi itself. But we do have some GPIO pins to deal with here. There's actually five pins on the screen's PCB, but we're only going to be using four of them. The red wire is going to go to the 5 volt, that's going to power the screen itself. I'm going to use the green wire for the SDA connector. This is going to transfer data from the Pi to the PCB on the back of the screen. Next is going to be yellow for our SCL connector, that's the clock connector. And finally, black for ground. And these are all going to go to the GPIO pins on the Pi. So once we have our GPIO wires and our ribbon cable in place, it's time to mount the Raspberry Pi on the back. Like I mentioned, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4, and this is actually the 4 gigabyte model. The kit does come with four mounting screws, so we're just going to screw the Raspberry Pi right here to the standoffs on the back of the screen. Once we have that in place, it's time to connect our DSi ribbon cable from the PCB on the screen to the Raspberry Pi's DSi connector. It's a little lock connector. I'm going to push it down, make sure everything's secure. And this is what's going to transfer our video from the Pi to the screen. Now it's time to deal with the GPIO wires. Now in all actuality, you only really need the ground and the power to power this screen from the GPIO on the Pi. So the red wire would go to GPIO pin 4 on the Raspberry Pi and the black wire would go to GPIO pin 6. But if you'd like to connect all four wires, the green, which is going to our SDA, would be on pin 3 and our clock, which is the yellow wire, would go to pin 5. So this screen doesn't require any extra drivers at all. This will work right out of the box with RetroPie or Raspbian but you might need to rotate the screen depending on what kind of case you have. And I know for a fact that with the case I'm using, I need to rotate the screen 180 degrees. So in my config.txt, you can either do it from within Raspbian or RetroPie, or you can just plug the SD card into a Windows PC or a Linux PC, find the config.txt file, and edit it with a text editor. You're going to add LCD rotate equals 2. So if you do end up getting a case like this, make sure you have your micro SD card inside of the Raspberry Pi before you assemble it. I mean, it's really easy to assemble and disassemble. The screen and the Pi just sit right inside of here, and there's four screws that are going to secure it from the back. But unfortunately, with this specific case, I cannot access the micro SD card once everything's assembled. 
So all I needed to do was plug in my USB Type-C cable. I also have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack going to a speaker. Now you might notice a little bit of flickering on camera. You will not see this with your naked eye. I'm definitely going to be testing some screen tearing, but overall it's definitely not the best screen that I've seen. It is a bit washed out, especially with some brights, but as you can see here, this looks much better than the desktop. I've always hated the Raspbian desktop. It's always looked washed out on pretty much anything I run it on. But once you get some colors on screen, it's really not that bad. I will say that the touch response on this is really great, and the touch will rotate as long as you use LCD Rotate 2. Do not use Display Rotate on a screen like this. LCD Rotate is the way to go. So I've mentioned that in previous videos, I'm not a big fan of touch screens on the Raspberry Pi, especially with this operating system. So I do have a keyboard and mouse connected. I'm going to head over to YouTube and run a screen tearing test real quick. The last screen that I reviewed was a 5.5 inch AMOLED display from Waveshare and screen tearing was absolutely horrible no matter what I did. And hopefully we don't run into the same issue here. And I can already tell you right now we don't have any screen tearing. These bars would be all torn up if we had any screen tearing whatsoever with this screen. So looks like we're good to go with this one. Overall, it's not the best 7-inch screen that I've seen, but I do love the form factor besides those gigantic bezels you're seeing here. It's not IPS, it's only 800 by 480 but it does have some pretty decent touch built in. I'm going to go ahead and full screen this video and just see how it performs here. With brighter colors, the screen is definitely washed out, and it's not as bad as you're seeing on camera, but it's still noticeable to the naked eye. I like the fact that the Pi attaches to the back of this screen, and with the case I'm using, we do have access to the GPIO pins. I think this screen would be perfect for a hi-fi audio setup using Volumeo and some type of DAC, that way we have that touch screen here. You could even use this in home automation or automotive applications. But I know a lot of my viewers are going to want to see some emulation running on this, and RetroPie will work here. But first up, let's test some Dreamcast with ReDream inside of Raspbian. So I've done a full video on how to set up this Dreamcast emulator on the Raspberry Pi 4 and they've recently updated it so performance is even better. Keep in mind, I don't have this overclocked at all because I don't have a heatsink on the Pi 4, but we're going to go with some Marvel vs. Capcom 2. So it definitely looks great with these games here. I mean, the colors definitely pop on this little screen. Not as good as some IPS screens that I've seen, but as long as you don't have those super bright whites on screen, it doesn't look so washed out. And the case I'm using with this screen has plenty of room for a heatsink in it, so I could do some overclocking if I wanted to and get even better performance with ReDream on the Pi 4. So it does work great with Raspbian. Touch is great. One thing that I'd like to do is kind of change the background here and maybe change the background of the file explorers just to a darker color because it does look very washed out with those brights. So here it is with RetroPie. The only thing I did was rotate the screen with that LCD rotate equals 2 and that's only if I'm using this case here because it needs to sit a certain way. Looks great. All the text here is legible if we go into RetroPie. I can read each one of these perfectly fine. But I do want to run a quick test here. I'm going to go with Sonic Advance for Game Boy Advance because this is a very fast paced game. And if there's any noticeable screen tearing, we should see it with this game. So far so good, but there's a spot up here that gets really fast and uh, we'll definitely notice it if it's happening on this screen. So I didn't notice any tearing at all and it actually looks really good on this little screen. If you added, let's say, the bezel project to RetroPie, this would be an awesome little setup. So my final verdict, I personally like this little screen. It's not the best looking screen that I've tested on my channel. It definitely doesn't have the thinnest bezels, but it's one of the best performing screens in touch, 
video playback, and gaming. I mean, no tearing whatsoever with this, even with the screen rotated. And that's a big plus. That's something you definitely want with the Raspberry Pi. It's compatible with the Raspberry Pi 2, 3, 3B+, and even the Raspberry Pi 4, like you saw in this video. Works with Raspbian and RetroPie with no drivers whatsoever. And if you can pick this up when it goes on sale for $50 to $55 and you're in the market for a 7-inch screen for your Pi, I think this might be a great choice. I will leave links in the description to the case and the screen, but kind of wait for it to go on sale. It does go on sale every few weeks, so just keep an eye on it. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.